Okay. Thank you, Jennifer. Today the twenty seventh. Does that sound right? Twenty eighth. No, twenty seventh. Tomorrow's the twenty eighth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that. Let's call to order the uh, meeting of the Ogdensburg Bridge and Port Authority uh, Finance Committee for February 27th. 2023. And I, I uh, <clears throat> noticed a, the small change that you made in the uh, budget to actual report, Patty, mm -hmm. and in terms of adding principal payments on loans and uh, uh, OBPA portion of projects and capital, and I really appreciate that. It uh, reminds me that I had forgotten that when I was discussing cash flow. I understand that it uses cash, <clears throat> and I think it really helps uh, helps me and probably will help all of us better understand uh, changes in our cash position, and uh, thank you for doing it. Would you highlight the statement? Uh, tell us what you think is uh, appropriate. If we start with the statement of financial position, you'll notice that our regular accounts receivable is at 663. 91.3% of that is current or 1 to 30 days. And we are done with all the wind turbine accounts receivable. That's all in. So the only other thing we have right now is the APAS that comes in and goes out. You will notice that our security deposit account is at 187, 555. That is full. It's actually over full. I transferred more into it than we needed, so we will be transferring some back in. But that will cover any tenant. We're fully funded on that. Really fully funded. Thank you. <clears throat> if we look at our um, accounts payable, the Project accounts payable of 47,000, that has all been paid except for $6,700. So we're keeping up with those. Uh, the project accounts payable was McFarland, Johnson, and, and Foth. We are getting our regular reimbursements on McFarland, Johnson. We do have to uh, submit the Foth for uh, reimbursement. And our regular accounts payable, if you look at page two, um, our first vendor there, we've already paid off $100,000 of that vendor, and we have since paid off all of it. Uh, our bridge inspection is now down to $49,000 since um, January, so we've paid an additional $11,000. The law firm is completely paid. Uh, the fuel is down to 16,000. And the final two, the insurance and the Leo are paid off. Is this from uh, <clears throat> unanticipated funds? Pardon, sir? Was this done through unanticipated funds or regular operations? Right, most of it was regular operations, yes. Some of it did come from the reimbursement from the Chrissy Grant, which okay. did come in. And we had, in essence, borrowed from ourselves, if you will, mm -hmm. that we took some money, say, from the credit card account, but we really don't have to pay it back. 
we would have used it anyway. So it gave us a, a pot that we could then make some decent payments with. Mm -hmm. Any questions on the statement of financial position? Construction in progress. We have to get rid of harbor deepening. Kathy is working on separating that out right now so that we know what will be port expansion and what we will write off for harbor deepening. Okay. Um, the Malls F is the other big one, and that one I believe we're in the process, process of closing, aren't we? It is. Well, I don't know if it's closed out, but everything's complete. Everything's complete, so we will be getting rid of that. Yeah, the yeah, next probably 45 days, I imagine that will close out. So <clears> by <throat> the end of the fiscal year, this should probably be in half. Right. The other two will be growing, the bottom two? This is phase one. I believe we're, we're, we're moving into phase two, so phase one will close out and then phase two will take its place because I think we're going into construction. Construction. Unless they leave it open and make it all one huge project. So the bottom one, 216, is that the grant? No. That's separate. That's separate. The grant hasn't even started yet. Is that correct? Right. We haven't got the final approval yet. Okay. We're waiting from, they tell us it's the uh, comptroller's office. Okay. We get that a lot. I, I start wondering whether that happens, but yes, yeah, the comptroller is um, reviewing it. Okay. Good. Ken, may I ask a question about construction and pro progress? I'm trying to understand. I see this listed as an asset. I take it that there are expenses that we've incurred, mm -hmm. and we haven't yet classified these as, for instance, land or, or land improvements or as buildings. Exactly. And we need to wait until they're complete. They're complete, and at that point, will reclassify it <clears throat> into whatever their long-term. Into a fixed asset of some. Uh, the, the harbor deepening will be expensed, that portion. Mm -hmm. Then the port expansion will go under port, probably land improvements. Sure. Um, the malls F will probably go under equipment because mm -hmm. that's all the lighting. So that will all move up into the fixed asset count. And then they'll start to be depreciated. And there are some places where these expenses will at some point have uh, grant, generate grant funds. But in many cases, that's not, not going to happen. They're just our simple expenses. Exactly. But, but for instance, the work on the airport terminal project, uh, a good part of that will end up being subject to grant if everything yes. carries through as planned. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not too far off. Any <laughs> other questions on that? No. I, I note that uh, under the regular accounts payable, we now have uh, top six vendors. And it, it makes sense to me that uh, fuels might be come in the winter. <laughs> yeah, that's right, and and that uh, even current bills would be substantial. Yes. Yes. We'll go on to the budget to actual. Great. <clears throat> Um, our bridge revenue is up. That um, of that, the total income is actually over budget. The budget at this point should be 164, and we're at 201. But we also have in 
bridge revenue, the threat for the border station was increased this year. We had the trains that were out here this summer, mm -hmm. which of course we would never have budgeted for. Um, the beach, we weren't sure if it would happen again and we did receive our funding for that. And we do have a small amount that was given to uh, construction project income and it shouldn't be there, it should be elsewhere. Airport revenue, most of a good deal of it is parking revenue. We had budgeted 40,000, we're already at 56. So we have much more parking than we thought we had, even though it's still not where we would like it to be. Pre-COVID, we were able to bring in approximately 250,000 in parking revenue. Mm -hmm. Uh, we did not budget for the into plane fees that we were getting from our prior airline. Uh, that ended up, in the past, it was all rolled into fuel income. And we said that's not really a good way to describe it because it's not the fuel itself. So we put that on a separate line, which is giving us some extra income. And our office rent was not budgeted at where we are right now. I believe with the change in, in rates and charges that uh, our former airport manager put forward, it has garnered a little bit more income for us. Our fuel sales are offset by our fuel sale expense. Our AEAS and the AEAS expense offset one another. The industrial park campus revenue, we note that it's still on a positive side for the month and that uh, shortfall is getting smaller each month that we, um, we have. We've been able to, uh, as we've been raising rates to be more competitive, we are seeing that little <clears throat> bit of increase has offset also some of the, the shortfall. The marine terminal revenue, the port manager budgeted quite conservatively. Uh, we don't like to go crazy with what we think we'll do with the port, so it, it's actually helped us a bit. Our storage was storage income was budgeted at 222 and we're at 279. Our wharfage was budgeted at 553, we're at 588. Truck loading, for some reason, he had not budgeted, so that was a windfall for us of 135. And the interest on the return of the 5.8 million uh, comes out to approximately $27,000 a month, <laughs> and that interest belongs to the port because it's Port's, the port's money. <clears throat> Uh, railroad revenue is up. We had uh, easements are never included in the budget. And we had some, uh, some uh, easements come up for renewal and we have a little bit more money from, from those easements. And we have some solar invoicing. That was an ease, I believe that's an easement also that got us a little bit more money. Uh, in the wind turbine, you'll notice that we're above budget there, and we're also above budget in expenses. The port manager budgeted two projects, we got three. So the extra income will offset the extra expenses that had to happen. Our salary expenses under the bridge, <clears throat> we had, we've had three Three people leave, uh, one moved out of state, one had a maternity and decided to leave, and we have not hired the general mechanic, and the new hire for the full-time toll collector was less than the budget we had for the one who moved laterally in the organization. The employee benefits follow salary, so if 
one is down, the other is down. Maintenance expense is over budget a little bit. We've used more salt than we had anticipated this, this winter. And we had more equipment rental. Most of that equipment rental is uh, re-invoiceable, but we still have to have it on the expense side. We also had the man lift here so that we could be in front of the building this summer. Our bridge maintenance expenses are well under budget, partly because the Tiger repairs allowed us to not have to put a lot into our general repairs this year. <coughs> And the um, budget for the inspection, we've not spent the whole budget amount so far this year. Our insurance is coming in under budget a little bit. Our data processing and accounting services are under budget. Part of that is because the PFC audit is now charged to the airport where it belongs. So our general expenses are down a little bit. Airport expenses, without the airport manager, our salary expenses will come in approximately $62,000 under budget. And the employee benefits are based on employees, so that will remain um, under budget. The biggest expense under maintenance expense that has brought us over budget right now is we have spent much more than we budgeted on the de-icing at the airport. We've had some serious freezing incidents and freezing rain that have required us to purchase more de-icing than we anticipated. We also have uh, auto is above budget and we also have some automotive that was specialized filters for some of the new equipment that we had anticipated just buying filters, but now we had buy specialized filters. Our fuel sales offset by our income. Our general expenses, part of the reason our general expenses are over budget, our computer invoices are now being split amongst the cost centers. And that has given the airport approximately $2,100 per month of their invoice, uh, which is added up. Plus the initial expenses on the SRE building are being expensed in case we do not move forward with the project or we don't get the project. Uh, this was only the uh, consulting engineering. Okay. Yeah, and yes, yes, yeah. <clears throat> yep. And airport parking expenses are under budget from prior years. So we may have to look into that with our partner on that. Our salary expenses for the industrial park are up, but we put more of the economic development director <clears throat> salary into the industrial park than we had my salary when I was trying to do it part-time. Our maintenance expenses, we are not over budget, we're not over the total budget, but if you look at 10 months of the budget, we're over for 10 months, but not the whole year. So as long as we don't spend approximately $15,000 in the next two months, this budget will be under budget. Um, again, in, in utilities in the industrial park, we budgeted net, not gross utilities, which we need to do. There was a little bit under interest expense under the industrial park. We had only looked when we did the budget last year at bank interest. We did not consider things like interest on the water sewer bills if they're not paid on time or a late fee on an invoice that might not be paid. So that's the sort of thing we have to consider now uh, going forward. The Marine Terminal salary expense is way down. Part of that has to do with a retirement 
And we also have a retired, the scale houseman was left in the budget. We did not know he would retire. So we've had two retirements at the port and the account clerk's salary has not been moved to the port yet. It will, it will likely be moved to the port for uh, UN. We've had, um, let's see, maintenance expenses are over budget. Again, we had equipment rental that was approximately 70,000 over budget, but all of that is re-invoice, re-invoiceable. Our ground maintenance budget is a little bit over budget, which is also added to that overage. And the auto budget, is over budget now, it may not be by the end of the year. And the utility expense is over budget for 10 months, but we're still well under budget for the full year. So if, if we don't get a, a huge cold snap between now and the end of the fiscal year, that one should come out under budget. Our legal expenses for the port, <coughs> include the Christie grant and the return of the 5.8. The wind turbine project, more, more projects mean more expenses, so we had the third wind turbine, but we had more income to offset that. And, and taking the discussion from the last board meeting as to operating income, I realized that we really should be including, as Mr. Coffin said at the beginning of the meeting, principal payments on loans and the OVPA portion of projects and capital expenditures should be considered, even though those items are on the balance sheet, they still use our income. So there you can see at the bottom, the principal payments on the loans so far this year are 917 and the projects and capital are at 231. The majority of that right now are, is our portion of the Chrissy Grant items. Sam, do you have any questions? Mm, no, I don't. Well, I really don't have any more questions either. I, I feel informed by this and uh, we are getting toward the end of the fiscal year. Um, I would assume that you're getting organized to have auditors come in. Yes. And have you had any contact with them yet? We know we have a new um, partner mm -hmm. on the account. We have a new principal on the account, and we have our young man who does a lot of the labor intensive work. He's been with us only one year, so I expect this audit might be a little different. We're waiting for an answer from the Attorney General's office uh, sure. to see if we have to open up our prior years for that the dissolution discussion and if we do that it doesn't change the overall financial statements it just changes a couple of the line items within mm -hmm. that are merged and compiled anyway mm -hmm. but we may have to break those out and there may be more audit work that will have to be done if we have to break that out we're hoping to hear back from the attorney general's office soon so that we can at least get that budgeted with the auditors if we have to go in and open up any of those prior years. Sure. In the meantime, until we do hear, to some degree, we'll go ahead as if we're not going to hear, wait till we're told otherwise. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And so that we can just proceed to make things happen for, right. for our, our routine and regular closing. We're starting, I have a, a 
worksheet coming to you from the mm -hmm. that will show us the breakdown of depreciation so that we can get a handle on how all of this all of these fixed yeah. assets yeah. work and i will be putting together a six month cash flow just so you can see the anticipation for next fiscal year see how the first six months will Wonderful. work um, and we are just starting to go through every account account by account to make sure we know what's in all of them, see if there are any um, entries that have to be made to move things, say, out of fixed assets or, or out of CIP into fixed assets, sure. that sort of thing. Um, any corrections that have to be made. So we expect it to be a relatively good audit. It shouldn't be too difficult. The person replacing our account clerk in the back starts Monday. Mm -hmm. So that means, uh, our accounting supervisor and our senior accountant will be giving some work away mm -hmm. and going back to doing what they do, which is great timing to get ready for the audit this year. Great. And then our new administrative assistant starts the 13th. So then hopefully I'll get some things off my desk too. Well, these things sound good you know in an organizational sense this is progress very much so yeah. and we have contracted with stephen baldwin to start the airport manager um, recruitment good we have a call tomorrow actually mm -hmm. any other business sam no Will you make a motion to adjourn? I will. That we uh, the meeting, uh, everything we've accomplished that we set out to do on the agenda. So I move that we adjourn. Meeting adjourned. Four thirty-four.